as an old AP person that the advanced placement program, and you'll see in our, our book, um, the AP edition, I think the advanced placement program provides some really good articulation between the two worlds of high school and, and, uh, and college. And so to look at advanced placement programs in your school, no matter what courses you're teaching, is a way of kind of thinking about some of the expectations that teachers in college seem to have for, uh, for students coming into their classrooms. I think that's one of the things the AP program has tried to do. One statistic that the AP program provides is that teachers who teach an AP course, no matter what other classes they're teaching, their instruction um, changes and deepens no matter what kind of class they're teaching just because of the kind of work that they're doing with AP populations and particularly I would say in having students write. Just the practice and continual reference to writing as a way of knowing is something that changes teachers' practices and some of you all might even be able to speak to this if you have taught AP and then taught other kinds of courses that your, your instruction um, seems to change. Um, the theme of this conference, uh, Linda told me, is about literacy and expectations. Um, expectations for literacy of the, of the college student who will be coming to you. So I'm going to tell you three things the college teacher expects, okay? And y'all who are teaching in the college, you can tell me if I'm telling the tale. <laughs> okay? Three things. One. We expect a variety of experiences, needs, and skills from our students. We expect that variety to a much narrower degree, in fact, than you as high school teachers face. That is, you have this incredible width and depth of experience, background, skill, readiness, when you have a student who enters a ninth grade classroom that I have with a student who enters the freshman college classroom. Mm -hmm. I need then to learn some stuff from you <coughs> about how to deal with that variety. Mm -hmm. That's one thing we expect, variety. Mm -hmm. The second thing we expect from students is anxiety. We expect anxiety from students who have left home for the first time, many of them, who don't know many of the people who are going to be sitting around them in their classes, and who are unsure if they can achieve in the way they might have felt confident about achieving in their high school classrooms. We expect that anxiety. Finally, we expect their expectations of what English teachers or history teachers are supposed to do and to be. We expect their expectations of what constitutes good writing, about how they should read, about how they should speak up. We know they have expectations. And oftentimes those expectations are either the things that we can use to help us instruct them better or they're the things that prevent us from instructing them well. That last one, their expectations about us, about the college classroom, is one of the things you all in the high school can control. Because their expectations of high school teachers, their expectations of what writing is, their expectations of what constitutes good reading are shaped by you. So when they come to us, they come with that notion of what a good writer is, or what a good reader is, or what a good speaker is, and you've helped them um, see that. Another reason for articulation then between us is that we together, and if we had more time, we could sit together and talk about the very issue. In fact, I started to do this, and I thought, no, no, you know, <laughs> we could go on all afternoon. I was just going to put up on the screen. Of course, you know, I'm not very good at this. What is what makes writing good? Y'all think about that. <laughs> when you go back to your classroom on Monday, high school and college, ask them that. Make them write it, and then you all email each other. 
<laughs> That's a good idea. See if high school teachers, high school students, and college students get understand in some kind of way what makes writing good. Now notice y'all that I said what makes writing good rather than what makes good writing. Mm -hmm. How's that different? Oh, this is a rhetorical question. How is that different? <laughs> what makes writing good? What makes good writing? I think what makes it good for one thing, for me, is it's entertaining, it's interesting, mm -hmm. it's fully supported. And I'm kind of crossing over into good writing also. Because they do cross over. Yeah. yeah. Because you said you want to read it. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I finally got to the point that some people the kind of essays that I have to give, I try to phrase them in a way that I want to read them. Mm -hmm. But it would be such a chore. <laughs> One reason I'm so thrilled at you all doing your public writing and academic writing, I want to see those two things together. I want you to see, I want my students to see, I should say, that academic writing should be writing we want to read. Mm -hmm. It should be. Or writing somebody wants to read. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I also want my students to see that bit that the connection between what makes writing good and what makes good writing is organic. That if writing is good, then it's going to be good writing in some kind of way. So at any rate, y'all. I want, I, I was going to do that because I thought it would be fun, um, but now we'll give it to you to do. Do it with your students. Talk to each other. Don't let this articulation conference where you've got these wonderful high school teachers here and here you all, don't let it end today. I know it doesn't, but you know what I mean. Talk to each other about a real issue like this. Then you've got a whole, then you've got your conference for next year. Um, so at any rate.